So far in our study of symmetry, we've learned about the five elements of point group symmetry. They are the identity element, inversion, rotation, reflection, and improper rotation, which is a combination of rotation and reflection. Here we're going to continue our study of symmetry and now abstract ourselves from uh, molecules. We first started talking about the symmetry of molecules, but now we're going to become more abstract and talk just about symmetry itself the way a mathematician would talk about it. So we said that symmetry elements, uh, there's a corresponding operator. Uh, for instance, the identity operator would take a molecule or take any structure and then uh, just do nothing to it and you get the same molecule back. So what we want to do is to represent those symmetry, uh, symmetry operators. Now, so far we've represented, quote, represented those symmetry operators uh, by looking at a website which showed the symmetry operations or by waving our hands around or trying to visualize it or something like that. Let's try representing symmetry in terms of numbers. In, partic in particular, uh, symmetry operators can be represented by matrices. Just let's see what we mean by that. Uh, let's take the C2V group, that's our favorite group, that has three, or sorry, four symmetry elements, that is E, C2 rotation, a reflection in the uh, X, uh, Z plane, and a reflection in the YZ plane. All right, that's called sigma, and this is called sigma prime. It's a V because the rotation axis is contained in these planes. And this will define as the Z axis. That's traditional, uh, that you take the highest order rotation axis to find that as a Z axis. And then these give you the planes, the XZ plane. Uh, so that's where this reflection plane is located and the YZ, that's where that reflection plane is located. So now that we have some sort of geometry set up, uh, let's see what we can do to represent these symmetry operators. Now these are operators in terms of matrices. All right, let's draw the coordinate system this way. So here the Z axis is coming out towards you. The X axis here and the Y axis here are in the plane of the screen. And let's take some point up here and let's give it uh, coordinates X, Y, and Z. All right. Now let's do a C2 rotation. All right. So this then would rotate around here. And now we're down here. And the coordinates of this point now are minus X, minus Y, and Z. Since we're rotating around Z, the Z coordinate doesn't change at all. But X goes to minus X and Y goes to minus Y. Let's see if we can, this would be a C2 uh, operation here. Let's see if we can represent the C2 operation in terms of a matrix. So what we want is to have a matrix that multiplies this vector X, Y, Z. That's what we started from. And we want to transform that into this final vector here minus X, minus Y, and Z. What sort of matrix can we multiply X, Y, Z by to get that? Well, if we put a minus one here, zero, 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 minus one, zero, and zero, zero, one. If we multiply these two matrices together, we get this matrix. So this is a representation, it's a matrix representation of the C2 operator. Let's try a reflection, okay, here's X, here's Y, Z again is coming out towards you, and here we have our point, X, Y, and Z. Let's try a reflection in the X, Z plane, so that's this plane here, so we're going to reflect this molecule, or this point, sorry, uh, perpendicular to there, it's going to go down here, so the coordinates of this point now are X, minus y and z. So y is changed, z and x haven't changed. So we want our vector x, y, z by multiplying by a matrix to be transformed into x minus y and z vector. Well maybe you can see, we'll just put a 1 here, 0, 0, we'll put a 1 minus 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So this matrix 
when multiplied together with this matrix gives you the transform coordinate. So you would say this is a matrix representation of the sigma v plane which is in the xz plane. All right, let's do uh, one more. Well, let's do all of them. Okay, so we did C2, let's sigma v. Let's do the identity operation. Here we go, might as well do them all. So here's our xy plane. And then the z is coming out towards you. And here's our point. We're going to transform x, y, and z. If we do the identity operation on here, see the identity operation, nothing happens. So that means we want uh, our point x, y, z to be transformed into x, y, and z. Yeah, that makes sense. So the matrix to do that is just the one that uh, 0, 1, 0, that has 1's along the diagonal. That times that is that. So this is the matrix representation of the symmetry operation identity. And then finally, we had the, um, we're going to do a sigma yz operation. This is the y-axis, this is the x. Here's our x, y, z axis, or x, y, z point. Where we're going to reflect in this plane, we'll go here, go here. So there it is. That becomes minus x, y, and z. Y doesn't change, z doesn't change, but x goes to minus x. So if we look at the vector x, y, and z, or that representing a point in uh, space, we want that to be transformed as minus x y and z. So the matrix to do that is minus 1 there, 1 on that diagonal, and 1 on that diagonal. So this then is the matrix representation of the sigma v prime operator, I guess we call that prime, which is in the yz plane. So there we are. We've represented symmetry by a matrix. And again, we're like not talking about molecules or anything. We're just talking about points in this two-dimensional space. Now, let's see how uh, x would be, how, how we could describe x. Now, what we're doing here, maybe you sort of gather that, is that we're becoming increasingly more abstract in our description of symmetry. We're thinking like mathematicians now. Is there some essential essence of these this symmetry and these transformations and these uh, symmetry elements and symmetry operators? There's something essential that can boil off. And the answer, of course, is yes. So let's look at x. How is x transformed? Well, for the C2, it went to a minus 1. For the sigma VXY, it was a 1. For the E, it was a 1. And for the sigma prime, it was a minus 1. So that should tell us, um, let's just actually write things up here. This is for the E, for the C2, for the sigma in the XZ plane, and the sigma prime, and these are sigma Vs. Uh, in the yz, sigma prime, pull that there. Let's extract out the essence. So e, let's see, oh there it was, e, that was a 1, all right? So we'll put a 1 there. How about, and this is being abstract now, c2, oh, we'll put a minus 1 there, minus 1. Let's look at uh, sigma v, that was, here it is, this is a sigma v, uh, in the xz plane, sigma v, that was a 1. Okay, put a 1 there. And finally, the sigma prime v, we'll put a minus 1 there. Minus 1. So this is what we would call a representation of the C2V symmetry, and it's a representation of the symmetry of the x axis. So this is a representation. of uh, C2V symmetry uh, for the x axis. So if you have x and a C, um, and C2V symmetry, you can boil off or get the essence of that symmetry by putting just these numbers here, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. Let's do the same thing for y, see if we can get a different representation. 
All right, so uh, let's look at how y transformed. Uh, and let's just remember these numbers. It was a 1 for the C2. It was uh, minus 1 for the sigma v was a minus 1. And for the uh, sigma prime, it was 1. So those numbers, the essence, are 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 1. Ooh, OK. How about the z-axis? All right, so for the z-axis, take a look at those, how that transformed. Uh, 1, 1, 1, and 1. So we can represent how z behaves in the C2V symmetry as putting all 1's here. I think uh, on our way to understanding what these representations are, we started representing operators in terms of matrices, but now what we're doing is representing symmetry of various things, in this case is the x, the y, and the z-axis, the symmetry as these numbers going across here as a um, uh, as a row in this matrix here. These are called, since you can't, these are just, um, if we just look at these, if we just look at the x part of this, this is a one by one matrix. All of these are one by one matrices, and so you can't reduce them any further, and so these are called irreducible representations. And I think they're called irrep for short, irreducible representations of x, of y, and z under this C2V symmetry. Of course, there'll be for different symmetries, there'll be different representations of x, y, and z, but for C2V, this is what it is. Now, if you study, and these. Um, we're doing point group symmetry. We've abstracted ourselves all the way out of chemistry and just into these numbers, and there are just two kinds of numbers here, one and minus one. We're now into the realm of group theory. Now, group theory says, group theory says that they're, uh, the number of irreducible representations has to equal the number of symmetry operations. All right, so there are one, two, three, four symmetry operations. We only have three irreducible representations, and that's all we need if we're just interested in the, how the x and the y and the z behave under C2V symmetry. But if you want a complete group, remember one of the um, mathematical requirements of a group, well, let's just touch base here, group theory says that uh, you have to have a closure rule that sequential application of any two symmetry operations in the group have to yield another operation of the group. Um, so that means that if uh, we do some operations here, what we'll find is we're missing something. And what we're missing is uh, how uh, combinations of these, in particular XY, transforms. So if you look at how XY transforms according to this, you'll get uh, the numbers 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So this is a complete set of irreducible representations in this symmetry. Anything that's symmetric in C2V can be represented as one or more of these um, irreducible representations. Okay, so that's what irreducible representations are. Um, and as we said, we can represent symmetry by a lot of different uh, number of representations, and the irreducible representation is the simplest way to do that. Now, this collection of things is called a character table, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next uh, section of, or in the next lecture. All right, but for this lecture, I hope you've gotten some sense of what a representation of symmetry is for a particular, uh, this is called a basis or. Uh, basis for x, for y, for z, and one more, we need that because the number of irreducible representations have to be the number of symmetry operations. So I hope you have a good feel for that. And now next we're going to talk about uh, what these things, uh, these tables of numbers are called. They're called character tables.